how to make hamburgers with wild game. Meat like venison, elk, stuff like that. It's got almost zero fat compared to um, regular beef hamburger. So there's a couple little tricks to make a good burger. Just with the skillet, let me show you how. I'm just gonna go through this step by step. You'll have the ingredients list just from doing it. You got the meat. That's a good place to start. Add an egg. Egg is what binds it together. Because you don't have that fat holding it together. Egg is like glue. I actually used to use it in the old days for things like glue. Salt. You should probably add some salt. You don't have to add as much as I do. Add some seasoning, whatever you like. Um, elk is pretty mild, so it'll season well. I use powdered bone broth just because it's got a good flavor to me. So I put a scoop of that in there. And then just for some texture, I just chuck in a handful of oatmeal. I don't know why. I don't know if you need it, but you definitely need the egg, and the egg is what keeps it together. Now, here's a way to mix it. You see, I have a tall sided container here, because it definitely will spill over if you have a shallower container. And the trick here is the reason why a potato masher works the best is you're effectively working this like you would bread dough and you're trying to work that egg in all the way through and mix it through the meat. So it's completely mixed through and that helps hold the meat together. Also provides some moisture, um, you know, like liquid moisture. Sure, it adds a little bit of fat, but we're adding fat in the pan. So that consistency is pretty good. I like it to be pretty loose. I could almost even add another egg to this and it wouldn't be, it might be a little loose, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add an egg just to show you. I'd probably make this just how it is um, and maybe it would be a little drier, that's fine. But just for the sake of the video, let's chuck another egg in there so you can see how it turns out. You know, so it's pretty gloopy, it's pretty loose. Make sure it's really thoroughly mixed. And mixing with the potato masher kind of ensures that it's thoroughly mixed so you don't end up with just meat, which has been laced with scrambled eggs, right? You won't even notice that there's an egg in here. And now it's getting really incorporated and you can kind of feel it change shape a little bit, it starts to stick to itself way more versus just being like gloopy. Kind of becomes a, a, a kind of a big wad of meat as opposed to, you know, just, you know, little chunks of ground beef. So you can see the consistency really likes to stick together. <clears throat> Should have been warming this up. Now we got to sit and wait for a while. I use a cast iron skillet. Um, that's going to hold on to your heat a lot better than, you know, like a stamped pan like that. I suppose you could use that pan like this, but I have no experience with that. I know how the heat works with this and that's kind of, you know, stuff you're used to that'll It'll probably work for you just fine if you're used to how the heat works. Um, so, because we got hardly any fat in here, we want to add some fat. But I don't add it in here, I add it in the pan. So you can use, this is a great opportunity to experiment with different flavors. Um, recently, I've been kind of on an olive oil kick. Sometimes I use butter. Gosh, you could probably use, well, obviously you could use lard. Um, Gosh, coconut oil, if you're a vegan, but um, or a combination. Um, a good sear can start with 
just a little bit of olive oil um, or a lot doesn't matter how much you want to spatter the your kitchen up um, that's fine a couple tablespoons two three maybe get that hot um, while you're waiting for that to heat up make patties you can tell how kind of like if I just drop this right now it'd probably make a burger and that's that's about as loose as you want it. Um, and that's fine because it will, it'll retain that moisture. And because that meat is so lean, I just kind of eyeball it by feel. And yeah, it's gonna get kind of gloopy on your fingers and whatnot. Here's how you check for, if the oil's hot enough, that's dancing just fine. You know, you kind of got to peel it off your hands a little bit. Gordon Ramsay says, lay away. Don't drop it in there and have the oil splash on you and burn you. My burgers are a little uneven. This is going to be a little bigger. But you see how kind of rough and loose it is. That's fine. That's going to, it's going to cook just fine. Yeah, this one's way bigger. <laughs> or... I like it in thirds. It fits the pan. It's the size I like to eat. So yeah, you really gotta peel it off, but just get those searing. I don't know, I guess I kind of go by how much uh, snap, crackle, pop you're hearing. And how that kind of determines how hot your, uh, your pan is. And the idea to get it, keep it hot enough, because that meat's still pretty cold and it cools that oil in that pan off. So you want, a, you want a decent amount of heat in there initially. But it's okay. Um, normally when you're frying things you or sauteing, you keep that oil really hot and you move the thing around a lot because if you reduce the temperature on the oil in the pan, and let like your vegetables or whatever sit in there. Now all that vegetables just soak up all that oil. You know, and that's kind of the opposite of a good saute. You're just kind of trying to cook it quick and not get it all oily and soak up all that oil. However, in this case, we are trying to get it to soak up. So a little lower temperature after we get that sear is what we're gonna be looking for. And I'll show you that in a minute. Kind of feels like it's snapping and popping a little more. Go ahead and flip it. Make sure that blank spot gets some oil on it again because you want hot oil contacting that. Go ahead and just flatten it out. Same thing there, get the oil underneath where the burger's gonna go. That's, here's where it's really important to lay away. If you flip it, real fast towards yourself, you'll get that hot grease on you. So that's a good sear. I mean, might look like, man, that's, that's almost cooked. That's almost done. Look at how brown it is. It'll get a little browner, but as we reduce the heat, it won't, uh, you know, continue to get burnt. But so you can see how the snap, crackle, pop kind of diminished a little bit. And that's just the, the cold temperature of the meat cooling off the pan and the oil. Depending, you know, keep an eye on it. If your stove isn't leveled, all that oil is going to sit back there. Or if it's level this way, unlevel this way, all your oil is going to sit there and that one will dry out. 
So keep an eye on that. This dog is pretty level, but I still like to kind of slosh it around and make sure the oil is uh, distributed and getting around there. I can see how the top of the burger is kind of dry. Um, sure, there's a little moisture coming from the meat that uh, didn't get that good sear on it. That's fine, but you can see how it's kind of drying out. That's what you're looking for in the next steps as we move away from the sear into the cook, right? You want a nice, um, I cooked my burger um, well done. Um, I mean, this is, all this meat is processed by me. It's wild game. You know, you could eat this completely raw if you wanted to, um, and it would probably be fine. But on my burgers, I go well done. Um, so you're going to be sitting in here for a while, you know, just check. Once it's firm in the middle, you're good to go. I think we got a good sear on the other side there. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Make sure you get that oil under where the burger was. Oops. I did not want to do that because you see how much moisture just shot out. Maybe that was a good thing for the instruction of the video to show you how much moisture is in there and what the searing does as part of the process, it keeps all that moisture in there. That's why it's important to sear it. Okay, now we're gonna reduce the temperature. And what you can do, because the olive oil is good to sear in, but if you wanna add some flavor, something you can do, well, there, add more fat, why not? So if you're the kind of person that thinks, uh, well, actually, I don't know, you know, is this healthier? It's gotta be healthier than beef. If you think that like cholesterol and stuff like that is a problem, here you could have 100%, you know, olive oil and you stay away from saturated fat completely. Okay, now you see how it's kind of dried out here. What you do, to introduce more fat, you baste that butter and oil under there. And you see, if you sometimes even after you poke that hole, I poke that hole in there. That basting will kind of almost cauterize <laughs> that uh, that wound, if you will. So now it's you know chilling out, less aggressive on the heat. Make sure that fat's kind of roaming around real nice. So this is an age-old debate. Ford versus Chevy. Uh, I don't know what other binary types of, uh, you know, arguments or cosmic debates. Uh, there's probably one to do with Oreos. You know, do you, do you twist it apart and eat the filling first or you go ahead and dunk right away? I don't know. Another one is, how often do you flip meat, right? Do you just do it once, you know, flipping it the least amount possible to retain the juices, or do you flip, you know, all, all the time? With this method, because we're trying to get the meat to soak the fat up, the more you flip, the better. So you see how it, it's already dried out. Yeah, it looks like fizzly on here, but here it's all dried out. So the more you can cover this in fat, the more it's going to soak that fat up. It'll add flavor. Yeah, we got the moisture inside due to the eggs and the moisture of the meat, but you need to balance that out with some, with some fat. And so flipping it regularly uh, and basting, having a decent amount of fat in the pan, keeping the temperature, I could probably 
drop it just a little bit, let it chill out a little bit. So, looks like they're soaked up some oil on the top there. So just kind of keeping it kind of freshly in contact with the oil as much as you can. And it, you can tell, you know, yeah, some of it splatters out and volatilizes, but um, as you're basting, you can tell, oh, there's, there's less, you know, fat in the pan that I have to baste with. Yeah, it's getting soaked up, and that's what you want. A little bit more. I could probably pull them now, or actually now, if you want to make cheeseburgers, now would be a good time. Because there's so much heat left in this pan. Take cheese, and I like to cut my cheese thick, so you got probably, so you could probably put an ounce or so of just good high-grade cheddar cheese, big thick chunks on there. Drop that heat down to almost nothing, cover it, and it's a bit of a guessing game because you try not to pull the lid off. Um, and then at a certain point, you can shut the heat all the way off and let that cheese melt. And that cheese will just evenly coat the entirety of the top of that burger. And it's just, a you know, you're, you're introducing a, a nice good whack of fat with that, with that good high quality cheddar, good aged sharp cheddar. But I'm not gonna do uh, cheeseburgers today. I wanna show you another. Cheeseburger's pretty intuitive. Just put the cheese on there, let it melt. Keep an eye on it. I wanna show you another thing to do because you got all this nice, uh, you know, all the brown stuff in the pan. So a nice fun little super old school way of doing something like this. Why not make some pan gravy? Nobody ever taught me how to do this when I was a kid. I just had to figure this out on my own, but holy moly, it is one of the simplest things to do. And it is so damn good. Just get a little final base there. And because I'm gonna need a little more fat for my gravy, butter. It's got good flavor, salted butter. Don't really need it for the meat. I'm pretty much calling that done. It's good to let the burgers rest a little bit. You know, they kind of, kind of like a good steak. They finish cooking, those juices kind of reabsorb in there. So we'll just take those off the pan. Now, gravy, you got all that delicious fat and all the little meat flavorings in there and some salt. Why throw that away? Just add just some little bit of flour. Soak up the, soak up the fat. Now, if you're the kind of person where grandma showed you how to do this and you're laughing your butt off and how I'm doing it, fair enough. Grandma never showed me how to do it, so I'd be willing to learn some better tips and tricks anyway. Okay, so that's all kind of worked up. Can add a little bit of milk. That'll kind of up the temperature a little bit, so once the cold stuff hits that, now it just lifts all that yummy goodness off of there. Mix that up. 
then it just gets all that fun, yummy stuff off the pan. I'm going to start this guy up because a little bit of water to thin it out, start the heat on there. Now here's where you can, you know, you can really zhuzh it up. You can add, you know, flavor, seasoning, business to your heart's content. I like my food plain. I'm a Minnesotan, you know. So pretty much got all that lifted off. That's good to go. Put it in there, simmer it, incorporate it. So you got all the little meat bits out of there. Just incorporate that. Whisk works. Depending on how thick or thin you like your gravy. Sometimes, a lot of times I go uh, thinner to begin with because then if you put it in the fridge and want to eat it later and heat it up on the stove then you kind of got you know some more moisture to work with and so there you go you got your olive oil in there you got your butter you can take a little taste of it see how much salt you might need if it's completely lacking in flavor like that, just pretty much tastes like milk. Add a good amount of salt. Yeah. So the salt, what the salt does is it kind of, as Gordon Ramsay says, elevates the meat flavor in there so it doesn't taste like milk anymore it tastes like you know because you're the salt makes you kind of more aware of the meat all right so I can move you back over here a little bit plate this up grab one of these guys See what that looks like. See all that gravy just oozing out of there. No pink at all. A lot of lovely moisture. Sorry. Steam, juice, nice sear on the outside. Get your gravy. Boom. Bon appétit.